back underwater everybody this is one of my uncut episodes typically I have a storyline and we do some cooking uh, today was just one of those days where I wasn't really in the mood to talk on camera but I figured I'd strap the camera to my mask and film some dive and just headed out with the boys to have some fun and uh, it's about the gist of it so I'll go over some of the scenarios had some Pretty cool dives, did some decent shooting. I actually stoned quite a bit of fish, so I was pretty stoked. Had some nice long dives. So this is my very first drop. Uh, most of the spots, I'll try to talk about them. Most of the spots this day were anywhere from about 55 to 75. This spot I think came up to, at the highest point, about 50 on top of the rocks. I think the sand was closer to 60. Just dropped straight under the boat, kind of scanning around, made a little commotion down there. There's a red grouper. You might have briefly saw it. I don't don't shoot those very often. I think that population needs a little bit of help in certain areas. But I do love me some mangrove snappers. You can tell this fish had been eating the chum that we were dropping. You can see it's kind of slow. And just gives me the go-ahead. I prefer getting a stone shot. Obviously, it dispatches the fish quickly and humanely, and also I don't have to fight the fish as much. It's gonna be—it's not gonna be running around, wrapping up in the reef, trying to find a hole. Stone shots are preferred. A lot of you guys make comments about how the fish look small underwater and then when I get my hands on them and bring them up, uh, they look a lot bigger. And it's true. It, it's the same way for me in the water. They, To me, they look very small. Um, and then once you get them up, get your hands on them, they look a heck of a lot bigger. This fish, really nice mangrove. This is probably 22, 23 inches. Just didn't give me the shot I wanted. Being a little squirmy. Just wasn't having it. Ended up letting him swim. So after seeing that big mangrove, I wanted to do a couple more drops in that area. The fish wasn't, obviously it wasn't sitting still, but it wasn't like darting away. So I don't think it was um, going to completely leave. And I did another drop and just saw, if you look at the top of the screen, it went into that cave. I don't want to shoot into a cave on a smaller fit, well, a thinner fish uh, with two bands. You run the risk of getting your shaft stuck. Poking around, poking around, and it comes out the other side and do a little one-hander and got a little lucky on that one. Couldn't believe I stoned it. That was a cool clip. I was pretty thrilled about that dive.
And I was actually feeling pretty good this day. I had some trouble with my ears a few weeks back, and uh, maybe the rest um, gave me some better dives. But I, I did have some pretty decent dives this day. I'll, maybe I'll throw a timer up on one of them. You guys can hold your breath with me. So we moved along to a new spot, about the same depth, I think the bottom was about 55, 60. Um, and I'll throw a timer up on this one, this was actually a pretty good dive. My average dive's only maybe a minute and 20 or so, but for some reason I was pretty relaxed this day, feeling pretty good, so if you want to hold your breath with me, get ready. Let's go. So I think one of the most... Um, unknown things about free diving is a lot of it is mental meditate meditation and um, just being able to relax yourself yourself calm down um, I actually do a lot of meditation I don't really do a lot of breath training but I do a lot of let's say brain training just trying to calm myself try to keep all your muscles relaxed and your neck you hold a lot of tension in your jaw and your neck when you're diving Next time you're out there, just pay attention to that. You you kind of keep your neck and your your jaw clenched. There was another red grouper out, out there off in the distance. You may have seen. Just kind of laying on the bottom, scanning around. You see that red again? Just sitting there staring at me. And wouldn't you know it, another nice mangrove comes in. I'm mellow, so the he's mellow. Got another good shot. So we were just about to leave and I told the guys I was just I was gonna take one more drop. I just wanted to do one more. This area looked real nice. And uh, I don't even get maybe 15 feet down and a couple of yellow jacks catch my eye. These are perfect little five, six pounders, little eaters. Love these for sashimi or anything raw and comes in and gives me the broadside and got lucky there again, got a good shot on it. These things get up to I think the biggest I've ever had in the boats, maybe 22, 23 pounds. But if I'm going to eat one, I like those small little, maybe five to eight pounders. Absolutely love them.
along to the next spot. This one was just a hair deeper. I think the sand was about 75-ish. Um, you can see off in the distance, there's another little small rock pile. Uh, we were working this edge, but it was clear enough that you could see both. So I did a drop on this one, just kind of check it out. A lot of mangroves, a lot of yellowtails. Um, I already had three mangroves, so I was pretty content for the day on mangrove snappers. And uh, just kind of scanning around. Pretty busy, but I was looking for a grouper at this point. I had my sashimi, I had my snapper, and uh, all I was missing was some nice fatty grouper. And you can see me look out, I'm looking at that rock, so after this drop, some big margates out there, white margates. Um, after this drop, I swam my way over to the, the other pile and did a drop in. Some pre pretty interesting stuff happened. It was pretty cool. Well, kind of, I guess. Didn't get the fish, but it was cool. You'll see. So from the surface, I saw a medium-ish grouper, maybe 15-pound black grouper. And I kind of lost sight of it. So I was just going to do a drop, like a half drop, and kind of get my bearings, see if I could see the fish. So I'm going to play this regular speed. If you're on a phone, you're not going to be able to notice it. I'm going to play it regular uh, and let you see if you notice anything. And then I'll play it again back, zoomed in, and maybe a little slower, and show you what, what it was that caught my eye that I missed an opportunity on. And it happened pretty quick. And I already saw it, and I'm, now I'm eyeballing the crack. And if you missed it, there was a really nice black grouper that swam into it. There was actually several. Um, there were some down on the bottom, but there was one really big one that swam in that. It looks like a little like someone took a hatchet and hit the side of the rock. Uh, there was a crack right there, and a bunch of them kind of darted right in there immediately when they saw me drop. And it was a very healthy fish. So I'm going to play this clip back, zoomed in, and slowed down so you can see it. You can actually see the fish right now, but I'm, I'm moving my head quite a bit. and um, I, I My camera picked it up before I actually saw the fish, and it's pretty much top center of the screen right now. You'll see the fish flick here in just a second. Right there. You can see the big old black paintbrush tail. Um, I'm normally on the low end when it comes to judging groupers. You can see it swim right into that crack. So that was that same clip. I'm on the low end of judging groupers. That fish was very healthy, minimum probably 30, 35 pounds. Um, so after seeing that, obviously I wanted to investigate a little more. Definitely caught my attention. So I took my time on the surface, breathed up. Um, I was hoping that when I got down there, maybe the fish had just gone under the ledge and was going to be sitting there, kind of um, hiding under it, but still had it, having his head out of the hole. So I'm on my way down, and I can see a smaller grouper sitting outside of the cave. That fish is probably 18 to 20 pounds, and it was significantly, you see another, even another grouper swimming, it was significantly smaller than the first one. Um, so I come down, hoping it's going to be out in the open. It's not. And uh, now I've had... At this point, you can see a big cloud of dust. I've had probably two or three more groupers swim in there. So now there's, I'm not exaggerating, maybe four or five, um, a couple of small ones and several big ones in that same hole. And uh, the problem was, is as they all rushed in there, that bottom was real silty and just stirred it all up. And if you've ever dove in that kind of stuff, once you stir it up, it's going to be murky for who knows how long, probably at least 45 minutes to an hour. <clears throat> Seriously, they're all the same. They're all in that same hole. There's like, that's the that's like the medium one. So we'll speed this up a bit. This was my return trip. There's a big old Goliath out there. I did probably four or five dives on it, and this cave actually connected all the way through the rock onto the other side, and it was just as murky as this. Um, we sat there for probably 20, 30 minutes, and this is what it looked like. I don't know if they weren't super deep in there, and every time you went down, they would twitch more, but you just couldn't see anything, and we were doing nothing but killing time. 
but it was pretty wild. I'd love to go back to this rock and see this clear and see how far that cave actually goes back in there. I mean, it's big enough. Uh, like I said, it had at least, at least four or five groupers in it that I know of. So pretty cool. Didn't get the fish, unfortunately, but maybe they'll be there when we go back. So on to the next spot, same depth. I think bottom is about 60 here, 65 maybe. Um, Justin had seen a pretty big grouper uh, head into this ledge. I think there was actually a couple of them. At one point I felt like I saw multiple, but I was kind of getting them maybe mixed up. Um, and he didn't have a flashlight and then he was kind of over it because he had seen the fish so many times. So I figured I'd go in and check it out. In this situation, I'm normally going to lead with my gun. Like I always talk about, you come around that corner, and if that fish is sitting there, you have a split second of when you can shoot before it takes off. So typically, I'm going to lead with my gun, look around the corner. It's kind of foggy, and that lets me know that there is something in there moving around. I didn't see the fish, but had a pretty good idea because there's that dust kicked up that something has at least traveled through there. Second drop, kind of exploring the other sides of it. And I peek in here and you can, if you pay attention closely, you can see the tail flapping and it, uh, it's the right grouper. I'm just trying to see if there's any type of shot on it. And you can see that thing realizes what I'm up to and takes off and makes quite the mess. And at this point I realize it's a, it's a pretty healthy fish. I could see how tall that tail was, the girth of the tail. Um, I knew it was, we're looking at minimum of 20, 25 pound grouper, which is a really nice one for around here. He's in it. I just need a better shot on him. All I can see was his tail. He just shifted. So third dive, I've seen the fish. I have a pretty good idea of the layout of this cave. Um, it's kind of half the battle. For the most part, I know a lot of my spots. This is one of Justin's spots, so I wasn't familiar with the way this was set up. But after looking at it a couple times, I, I got a pretty good idea of what I think is in here, or where he's at, rather. Um, so I'm coming around the corner. 
trying to see if there's any other angle. I know I have a feeling he's going to be in here, but I'll see if there's a different angle. So I come around this corner, and I point blank him right in the face, and he turns, and I pull the trigger at what I thought was going to be a headshot, but it just it happened so fast, like in the blink of an eye, the fish had already moved a bit. And I like to get that headshot because I can control the fish. I have I can kind of call the shots. I can stop it. Uh, and like I said, it happened so fast, a little dark. I had a feel, and then I shot it farther back than I would have liked. Just gives the, the fish a little more movement and, and makes for a little more of a tricky situation trying to get that fish out of there. I think it just messed up. Right when I pulled the trigger, he flickered, and I think I hit him in the body. So I talk about this quite a bit. Return, return trip or a dive when you know a fish is there is the most difficult dive. Um, especially after you've shot the fish, your heart's racing, you're excited, you know you have, or you think you have the fish on. It becomes really hard to calm down to get your breath, um, to keep the heart rate down. Um, if you can mentally train for these situations, you'll be an effective, a much more effective free diver. So I left my gun down there. Wasn't It's clear enough. I'm not really worried about bringing it all the way up. And what I'm doing here is I don't know how far this fish went back, so I'm crawling into the cave completely blind. It's so murky, I can't see anything. And I'm just running the line through my hands trying to feel if I can feel the shaft. Because if I can get to the shaft, I know how close the fish is to me, and unfortunately I swam in that cave and all I had was line. There was no shaft. So I come around the corner and I'm just sticking my arms in holes trying to see if I can feel the fish, feel the shaft, feel the line, feel something. So I can try and get an idea of where this fish is at and um, kind of just figure out what it is that exactly that we're in for. So this is my second trip, trying to locate it. Uh, I had a feeling because it was such a big fish, I wasn't able to stop it. I thought it was gonna come out one of the other caves because uh, initially where I saw it was in a different location where I saw its tail. So I thought maybe, maybe I hit it far enough behind the head that it was able to swim far enough and it could come out another side and all I would have to do is brain the fish, cut my line and then pull it through. But um, I didn't see the fish at all, which was a little discouraging. I, Jump the gun a little bit. I hate leaving fish down there because I know that fish is obviously not thrilled with the situation. It has a shaft in it. Um, I hate to think about them suffering, but it's the reality of it sometimes. It's the world we live in. Um, but yeah, I was, I was hoping that I was going to have a little better access to that fish, and unfortunately I didn't. So in my head, I'm preparing for a pretty long battle. I'm thinking I'm going to have to go get the gaff or maybe put a second shot in it, try and kill it. Um, I was hoping that I wasn't going to have to wait until it cleared up to see it. And Cody, my buddy Cody was with me. He did a couple dives, one or two dives maybe, and he pulled on it a little bit. He said it moved a little, but not much. Um, so this is my fourth dive and I'm just assuming I'm going to have to pull with all my might and hopefully I can move it a little towards us. And uh, so I, again, crawl in here, essentially completely blind, can't really see anything. And this time when I go in, I can feel the shaft in my hand. This is when I'm all the way back in there. I can feel the shaft in my hand, so I know if I have my hand on the shaft, the fish is only, you know, 50 inches from that. So you can see, got the shaft, started to get it out a little bit. You can see me start to shake, and that's the fish going crazy. And just, I got lucky, whether it was one of us moving it or the fish decided to back up a bit. And um, couldn't believe it. Got it out and 
four dives. I thought we were going to be there for quite some time and just fortunate to get this fish. What a, what a nice fish it was. I thought it was somewhere around the 20 to 25 pound mark and ended up going uh, just over 30 pounds uh, after gutting and bleeding it. So not a fish you shoot every day. I was pretty darn stoked about it. I shot the big one. He's 20. Woo! And that is the end of my day. Holy crap, my legs are on fire. And that is all I have for this one. Uh, as always, any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have any feedback that is positive, love to hear it. Um, and yeah, that's it. Not my, not my typical style episode, but I know some of you guys like this raw dive footage, so I figured I'd throw it up. And I will see you guys on the next one. I'm telling you, it was a bigger one. Yeah, he is. He's healthier than I thought. Yeah. I grabbed him. Whew. Thank you for your patience, everybody.